A year ago, we went to Panama and we did some construction work for the school and built a playground. This year, we did it with two different trips. Uh, a men's work group that went in February uh, did some work at the camp. And it was an old resort center that the government had that has been sitting empty for 12 years. And they wanted to fix it up and use it as a outreach for the church. Fixed up the main lodge from plumbing to electric. And the rest of the week we built these pods that were away from the building where people, more people could stay. And then we took our student group here in June I mean, I haven't traveled out of the country before, and something like Panama I knew was going to be way different than what I'm used to. We did um, three days of a kids club. They really put us out there, and we walked around and personally handed out flyers, and we just like knocked on people's doors, which is like, that's crazy, you wouldn't do that here. Just, like, buenas is what they'd say, really loud, like as loud as they can, because nothing there is quiet. Everything has to be really loud, so. And the first day we got there, there was no kids, and we're like, oh. Darn it, there's not going to be anybody here. But then some boys started showing up and they would play tag with us. And then once we started singing, a huge group of kids would start like coming over. Then at the end of that day there was 20 something kids. And that was really neat just seeing, wow, we can really reach out to people. The guys from our church earlier had gone up and built like separate little cabins and we ended up um, having to stain and paint and varnish all of them. We helped out around the camp, we painted, and some people stained a lot. And the Panama heat and all the bugs, and we were sweating and painting and had varnish all over our hands, but we, I mean, it was like, it was really helpful to the people who stayed there. Another part of the ministry stuff that we did, we went to the children's hospital. Before we had walked in, they said that this was one of the best hospitals around. Then we walked in and the floors were dirty and there were holes in the wall and there was like 10 kids per room. We tried our best to present the gospel in whatever way we knew. They gave us little bracelets that really helped us out. One bead meant heaven, one bead meant the blood of Jesus Christ, one bead meant growing with Christ. After that we gave them backpacks that had like a toy inside of them. It was really sad just to see how sick they were and just to see them all crammed into a little space. And that was probably one of the hardest parts of the trip. We, when we went to the high school down there, we had to perform a skit. And then afterwards they told us you're just going to evangelize to them. And we're like, okay, like they were so open to praying with us and you could like just see it in her eyes like, oh wow, like there is, there is a God out there who can he can come into my life and he can save me. You go down there and do what you can do and whoever will accept it will and whoever won't, won't and maybe they'll have more opportunities later. It was really like God just giving you the strength and showing you that you can do anything. If you can do this in a different culture where you don't speak the same language, you can do it here. Whereas before I went on this mission trip, it was like kind of intimidating for me to do. Now I know that whenever I get the chance to evangelize and stuff that I can do it. Why would we talk about Christ in the mission field and not talk about Christ here? I learned to trust God more because he would give me the words to say. And when I was just sitting there with a blank stare, all I had to do was open my mouth and something would come out. Back here, I mean, you have all this nice stuff and you don't even realize it's nice because it's normal for you. That was what changed my life mostly about this, was just to appreciate what I have. It was inspiring to me to be maybe in the missionary field one day and make a difference in their life. Um, it definitely brought me a lot closer to God. I saw that how God works with other people and how he's just a loving God. The first full day that we're there, we noticed this guy driving around in a, a backhoe. And I said, well, what, what's he doing? And I'm talking with the missionaries there. He's helping fix the road. Well, I, I said, one of the guys that came on our trip, Doug, he's run heavy equipment before. I said, I don't know if he can help you. So they both kind of looked at each other and thought, a heavy machinery operator that came with a student group? What is this? All they had there to work with was a tractor loader backhoe, but not nearly large enough for the project at hand. And then this other guy from the church is like, hey, I got a track hoe. Yeah? Oh, okay. And he didn't know that we were working on this road. Nobody really knew we were working on the road. 
And so that was exactly the machine that I had defined that we needed to have. So that got brought out. My second day there, the transportation authority came in with a car full of, of people in, in shirts and, and ties, basically said, legally, in 10 days, we're cutting you off of the highway. Uh, without that access, the camp could not move forward. If you can't get people into the camp, you can't have a camp. And just constantly, it was a battle, us against the jungle, trying to get this road put in. And everything that went wrong, they found a solution for it. It's just you get the sense of an actual war going on, that something's trying so hard to stop something, and then something else is trying so hard to keep something going, and you just get a sense of that. Got the road done just in time. We found rock where we needed to find rock. We, we had machinery basically given to us. All we had to do was haul it and supply the fuel, and it came out of nowhere unexpectedly. We finished the placing the last culvert and parked the machines at 7 o'clock Wednesday night. 3.30 the next morning, we were up, we were loading the vans, and we were heading for the airport. We got this done, but we got it done exactly on time. After the fact, I look at it, and I can proclaim that I didn't go to Panama to be with the youth. I went to Panama to build a, to build a road. It opened my eyes and gave me the opportunity to step back and go, I've got to stop putting God in the box. He is so amazing that I've got to give him the opportunity to dazzle me with what a marvelous guy he is.